Today, we're gonna be talking about some magic berries, also known as poop. So if you don't wanna talk about poop, then you need to move on from this video. But if you are someone that gardens, homesteads, farms, or just enjoys having a nice, lush, beautiful flower bed, this is some information that you are gonna want. These are some of our bunnies. We use our rabbits for meat. Most animals are dual purpose if you are speaking in terms of poop. Manure, black gold. So rabbits are actually really good goats too, but it's kind of hard to catch goats poop because they just poop wherever they are. And rabbits will poop in the same spot every single day. So let's talk about why you would want rabbit manure on your garden. Rabbit manure is packed with phosphorus, nitrogen, potassium, and other key micronutrients and minerals. Rabbit poop also contains trace amounts of other elements like calcium, zinc, sulfur, copper, just to name a few. Like I said, rabbit poop is high in phosphorus and nitrogen. It also has potassium as well because their urine isn't mixed with their poop, where, where we have our rabbitry anyway. We have it set up to where our urine will fall completely through and our poops stay collected up on the mesh wire. The, we have quarter inch mesh wire. Um, make sure that you have a spot for them to rest their feet. You don't want them to be standing on that hard wire all day long. So we have some hay and some pieces of wood and some platforms for all of our rabbits and all of our um, hutches, but they do have a specific spot that they poop in their cage every single day. So it makes it real easy to collect rabbit poop because you can separate the poop from the urine. It is something that can be directly put on to your garden. This is considered a cold manure instead of a hot manure. A hot manure would be considered um, chicken, cow, pig, any wet manures like that. You'll notice that rabbit poops are very dry. You can break them up. You feed them generally a diet of greens and vegetables and these alfalfa pellets. So as you can imagine, it is like an alfalfa pellet turned to a circular shape and you can just crush it. They can produce two to 300 pellets per day. So even if you don't want a rabbit for meat production, you can absolutely get one or two rabbits and use their manure for any of your gardening or flower beds that you have and I, that would be sufficient. Phosphorus is a plant essential nutrient that is vital for harvesting energy from the sun. And then your plant then converts that energy into nice, healthy, strong growth and reproduction, resulting in a higher, more productive harvest for whatever it is that you're growing. Phosphorus lacking plants will oftentimes appear weak and thin and just not very healthy in general. Nitrogen is also vital to soil health and plant nutrition. Nitrogen is part of the chlorophyll molecule that actually helps give your plants that nice green vibrant color. Plants that are lacking in nitrogen could very much look yellow and discolored, especially if you know you haven't overwatered them and they are looking droopy and yellow, it is likely because they are lacking in nitrogen. Nitrogen is also a catalyst for other minerals that your plant and the soil need. Rabbit poops are dry and odorless and they just crumble when you when you squish them. We just take, we just use our hands and collect the rabbit poops um, because they're just not yucky. They don't stink, they're not, they're not poopy. You know what I mean? They're not just like what you would think poop would be like. So don't be scared of your rabbit poops. Rabbit poop improves soil structure, drainage, and moisture retention. It improves the cycle of microorganisms in the soil too. And earthworms absolutely love some rabbit poop in their soil. So rabbits and worms actually make a great team when it comes to soil health and healthy, fruitful plants. So like I said before, rabbit poop is considered a cold manure. You'll hear that topic a lot. Like we have chickens and we have pigs and we very much use their manure as well, but there's a different process to breaking down their manure because it's considered a hot manure and will very much burn your plants and it just won't be good for them. So it's important that you take the steps to break those, those manures down properly in a composting pile. However, rabbits and goats and llamas and sheep, you don't have to do that. Any, any little pellety poops, you don't have to do that. Any dry poops, there's no reason for breaking it down at all. However, because we have so many rabbits and we can only use so much of the rabbit poop each year on the gardens and the flower beds, we absolutely add it to our compost pile because it just improves the, the carbon material and the breakdown of everything else. So absolutely, if you have extra, throw them in your hot manure compost pile as well. 
they're so scared because usually they're like right all all up here and want me to pet them but come here Bella Bella and Polly are in here and they're very big aren't you and them is very scary to the rabbits even though I don't think that they would hurt the rabbits they might chase them but I don't think they would hurt them but the rabbits are very scared of them so they're very nervous so I'm gonna get out of here you and I are gonna go check out all the ways that you can use rabbit poop for your garden needs. Okay, let's let's pick up some poop. Behind me here is actually where our main compost pile is. Let me see if I can find any rabbit poops. Yeah, so you can find some rabbit poops in there and it just helps break everything down. It's just nice, good, nutritious, food for your garden and another method that I personally use most of the time is just sprinkle your rabbit poops all over your garden every time you clean out the hutch so I don't know if you can see here all of these rabbit poops the sun is in the way all of these rabbit poops here and they are dry they crush up real easy and those just gradually break down over time. Again, because rabbit pellets help um, keep the moisture in your soil and the worms really love them and they break down over time. It's like a time-released medicine capsule. They break down over time. I like to just do it that way. I just sprinkle them on there. That way you're not overloading your plants with anything. Um, if there's already plenty of nitrogen in your soil, for example, you don't wanna be overloading it with any sort of fertilizer, whether that be organic or fertilizer that you bought from the store. A lot of people will do a soil test in their garden beds. I'm not sure how much they cost. We've never done that. Knock on wood, we've had plenty of luck just kind of knowing and reading our plants and, and knowing what is needed or not needed. And overall, we have pretty good soil just from the methods that we use here on the homestead. But if you live in an area and you've never planted before or you're just completely unsure where your soil stands as far as the minerals and the micronutrients that are in it, you can absolutely get a hold of like your extension office in your town and they can guide you to how you can get your soil tested. Now I kind of want to test my soil just to see. Maybe that'll be another video. We should check into that. Okay, so this is my favorite method. It's real easy, painless, effortless. Grab the rabbit poops, sprinkle it all over your garden. Okay, so the next method is compost tea. You'll hear people talk about compost tea. Um, there are several ways to make compost tea, but one of them is using rabbit manure, and it is also super easy. I don't like to use the compost tea because then I have to put it into a, a watering can and haul it around and I just don't want to do that. But I don't call me lazy or maybe I'm working smarter not harder. Either way, compost tea is very beneficial um, to your garden. It will release all of that goodness that's in your rabbit pellets right away to soil that maybe is lacking in potassium and nitrogen and all of the other things that your plants need to be healthy. Let's make some compost tea. Okay. So what you're gonna wanna do for compost tea is get two or three cups of your rabbit poops. There might be some hay in there or straw or whatever bedding you use and that's totally okay. Don't worry about it. Don't feel like you have to pick out every little poop or every little piece of bedding. Another thing I did wanna mention, if you don't have rabbits, don't want rabbits, but you do want their poop, it'd be really easy to get a hold of some of your friends or family members that have rabbits or even the county extension office or the people with 4-H, I think that they would be more than willing to sell you a couple of cups of rabbit poop. Okay, so making compost tea is this easy. You are going to take your two or three cups of your rabbit pellets, put them in a five gallon bucket, fill the bucket with water. Okay, once you have your bucket full, you are quite literally going to be stirring the shit pot. You're gonna do this for a couple of days. A lot of people say to cover it. I don't cover it. I mean, I don't think it matters. Cover it or don't cover it. I just put it up so the dogs can't get into it. And you just wanna stir it a couple times a day for two or three days. If you let it go longer than two or three days, it's totally fine. If it's not as long as two or three days, that's totally fine too. So what you want is for 
the pellets and all of the pooks to fall down to the bottom of your bucket and you should be left with a nice tea colored water and that's going to be your diluted compost tea that you're going to use on your garden so i mean you really can't go wrong with this grab some rabbit poop put some water over it stir it a couple of times each day and when you're ready to use it put it on your plants in your garden and you will have a very nice rich healthy fertilizer for your garden that's all i have for you guys today we talked about poop we played in the poop. We stirred the shit pot. Hope you learned something. I hope this video was valuable to you. If it was, please consider subscribing to our channel. Like this video before you go. It helps us out a ton. And I will see you back again next time. Right, Bella? Say goodbye. Say goodbye, YouTube.